The profits of a firm in a competitive industry are entirely driven by the prices of output, P, and the prices of inputs, say W and R for L and K, as well as the underlying production technology. Given P, R, and W, the firm chooses K and L to maximize profits as the difference between total revenue and total costs. From the first order conditions for a maximum, we can see both that the marginal revenue product of an input will be equal to its input price, but also that the marginal rate of technical substitution in production will equal the ratio of the input prices. To see this, we can solve each of the first order conditions. P Q sub L is equal to W and P Q sub K is equal to R. Divide the first by the second. The P's cancel. Substitute W over R and we get our result. This implies, as our intuition suggests, that profit maximization will lead to cost minimization. To confirm this, we need to check that our solution is indeed a maximum by examining the second order conditions. For the solution to be a maximum, we must be at the top of the profit hill. That is, the slope of the hill must fall in any direction we move. The effects of K and L on profits are described by the total differential. To find the differential of that function, we need to recall that those partial derivatives are themselves functions of K and L. So the second partial derivative is going to be equal to the partial derivative of pi sub K with respect to k, so pi k k dk plus pi k l dl times dk, that's my first term, and the second term is going to be pi l k dk plus pi l l dl now dl. By Young's theorem, pi k l is equal to pi l k, that is the cross products are the same, the order of differentiation doesn't matter, so I end up with, I can combine terms, the second differential is going to be equal to pi k k d k squared, just combining these two terms, plus 2 times pi k l dl dk, these terms here, plus pi l l dl squared. We need to make sure that the second differential is negative no matter which direction I move. This concavity condition will be met if pi k k is less than zero, right? If the only thing I'm changing is k, I need to make sure that that slope becomes diminishing. Or if pi l l is negative, I need to make sure that if I just move in the l direction that the curve diminishes. Or I have to ensure that moving in both directions, I'm still moving uh, in a negative direction, and that will occur if this third condition uh, is met. Let's relate this back to production. Recall that profits are just the difference between total revenue and total costs, so that pi k, pi sub k, is just p q sub k minus r, and so pi sub k k is just p q k k there's no K and R, so that goes away.
Similarly, we can get the other partial derivatives. Since price is positive, I can eliminate it, yielding a condition solely involving the production function. Thus, the second order conditions for profit maximization is the same as requiring that the firm operate on a concave portion of the production function. Alternatively, this condition implies that the sort of price-taking, profit-maximizing behavior associated with competitive markets cannot arise for production functions that are not concave in inputs over some zone. Since all concave functions are quasi-concave, this implies that the profit-maximizing firm always operates in a zone of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. The profit-maximizing firm chooses its inputs to minimize the cost of the output that emerges from its price-taking behavior. That is, our intuition is correct. Profit-maximizing firms are cost minimizers. In the long run, the competitive firm's profit maximization problem yields input demands that are functions of the prices it faces in output and input markets. Plugging these back into the definition of the profit yields the profit function. Assuming manufacturing employees are doing their job, Plant managers, or economists, don't need to know anything about the underlying technology. The profit function provides all the economically relevant information. Because L and K, hence Q, are chosen optimally, we can appeal to the envelope theorem to extract the profit-maximizing levels of Q, L, and K from the profit function. That is, the derivative of the profit function with respect to P is just Q. Similarly, the derivative of the profit function with respect to R is the negative of K and the derivative, partial derivative of the profit function with respect to W is equal to negative L. So, profits are increasing in P Profits are decreasing in input prices. Further, notice that the profit function is homogeneous of degree 1 in input and output prices. That is, if we double P at the same time we are doubling R and W, then our profits will double. 